I regret that it took me so many years to read the book. Wade told me about it when I interviewed him in 2009 near his home in Greensboro, North Carolina. The story behind The Secret of the Stairs goes back nearly 60 years when the young Wade was on a ministry trip along with other students from his Bible school. 1957, I believe. I was older than the other students. I had sold a business, I had a new car, and I was older, so I was always assigned as the driver on outstations from Eastern Bible, the Bible school. We went to a church in New Jersey. Yeah. So I went up to my room, opened my Bible at random to read because I didn't have anything to do. The I, others were watching TV, right? Y yes. <laughs> he thought that w we would all go pray to get ready, yeah. you know, for the ministries. And instead, the lady said, we just bought a new TV. Would you like to see it? And they all go running into the living room. I had owned a cable system. I didn't want to see TV. I knew. I understood what TV does. It's the eye gate. And it's disastrous to a deeper spiritual life. And so I went upstairs and opened my Bible at random. And it happened to open to the Song of Solomon. I started to read. Then literally I was translated into the Song of Solomon. I became the Song of Solomon. I lived the life of the bridegroom. I felt what he felt. I desired what he desired. Then I became the bride. I had all the feelings that she had, what she went through. I felt it. I lived it. And then I became the daughters of Jerusalem. And I felt what they felt. And I understood what they understood. This lasted for hours. This eventually resulted and the secret of the stairs. Yes. Well, then I thought, now I've got something to teach. And the Lord said, no, you're to live it and then teach it. Well, then 1970, John Jimenez had just started Rock Church in Virginia Beach. He rented an oceanfront campground, and I was the morning Bible teacher. And wow. I taught a series of messages on the Song of Solomon. Later, it was copied off on seven-inch reels. Then my son literally typed off the messages, and then they were translated into a little booklet that gradually expanded into the present book, The Secret of the Stairs. On the surface, the bridegroom is King Solomon, the bride is his wife-to-be, and the daughters of Jerusalem are her friends. But we see the deepest application of the song by recognizing that the bridegroom is Jesus, the bride is a Christian who hungers for more than her current level of spiritual experience, and the daughters of Jerusalem are that part of the church that is satisfied with the status quo. At first, there's not much difference between the bride and the daughters of Jerusalem. But this changes as the bride prays, Draw me. This is an important first step because no one can enter into a deeper relationship with the Lord on their own power. The bride starts out self-centered, mostly interested in God for the blessings he can give her. But Jesus is willing to work with her where she is at and expresses his delight that she is willing to be drawn closer. As the book progresses, the bride gets to know the Lord as a person and begins to value him for more than just his blessings. Then Jesus withdraws to increase her hunger for him. She learns that the watchmen of the city, which Wade interprets as pastors, are no longer able to satisfy her with their second-hand interpretations, experience, and revelation. This now distinguishes her from the daughters of Jerusalem, who are quite satisfied with what they have always known. The title of Wade's book, The Secret of the Stairs, refers to the steps which Jesus leads us to, one by one, so that we may enter his chamber. The bride progressively dies to self and learns to obey at the slightest prompting. She experiences the unity with God described in John's Gospel, resulting in a change that's noticed by her friends. Unlike them, she no longer does busy work for Jesus. She works with him as his wife. And like the bride in the Song of Solomon, Way Taylor worked with his Lord. He kept an apartment, a second home in Washington, D.C., especially for this purpose. It was just five blocks from the Capitol building. There's many different ministries there, and they're meeting with congressmen and senators, and they're praying about abortion, and that's not my calling. 
I don't get involved in that. I just say amen to it and encourage them. My calling has more to do with principalities. It has to do with the powers of darkness. The main spirit over Washington, D.C. is the spirit of confusion. Politicians come to D.C. with all kinds of ideas, and they don't do any of them. Because the spirit of confusion is so powerful, they do everything but what they said they're going to do. And things change. That spirit has got to be brought down. And there's coming a kingdom of God. Wade Taylor has been gone from this earth for three years. As great as his intimacy with God was while he was here, that's nothing compared to what he's experiencing now. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Music